What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. I am recording this on Tuesday, November 18th, 2025. I finished a lot of the back-end work I was working on the past few days. I deployed it uh, just now, and since I got some extra time, I wanted to address a question I saw come in a video last night that I thought was really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. All right, so the person says, Sak Pasi. Well, I don't know if he's Haitian or if he's just saying this because he knows I'm Haitian, but in any case, Sak Pasi, not Boule Frem. He's like, question for you, sir. Are you considering your ICP investment a loss? Also, the things that got you to invest in ICP in the first place, do you still think they exist? Do they still exist? Right? That's an important question. That's the one I really wanted to address. Uh, also, the things that got you to invest in ICP in the first place, do they still exist? So it's, it's a two-part question. Are you considering ICP a loss? And the things that got you to invest in ICP, do they still exist? And the latter is really the, the, the crux of this episode. So the first part, do I consider ICP a loss? Yes, I do. Um, I, I don't see any sign of evolvement from the community. Um, uh, I, I really don't. I see tribalism. I don't really see people valuing clarity, intellectual clarity. I, I see tribalism and pettiness. And definitely... I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with them. I, they seem to have some sort of complex where they think they're above people such as myself, you know, just because I'm from Haiti or from the hood, you know, they think they're above me, right? So, you know, they, they, they will never reach out because they think they're just above me. So I, I don't see like any evolution. So I do consider that investment a loss, especially after this realization I just made. That That is, he asked me, the thing that made you invest in ICP, do they still exist? No. No. Like, yes and no. Because what you have to realize is that what made me invest in ICP is the fact that it could host applications fully on chain. Right? That's what made me invest in ICP. I thought this was blockchain cloud computing. But here's what you don't understand. I was still learning as a developer. I was still learning as a Web3 developer. I was still learning the whole Web3 world. What ended up happening is that I read Casper's VProgs the last week and a half. I've been spending the last week and a half just reading Casper's v, VProg and rereading it, just thinking like, why are they doing things that way? And after reading Casper's v, VProgs, I realized like computation does not need to be on chain completely unnecessary and it's the wrong model so what casper basically did is it showed me it made icp strength turn into a massive weakness and i'm gonna do an episode about that to the icp community but casper basically made the exact feature that made me invest in internet computer seem obsolete and stupid thanks to casper v Prox. i didn't expect it and this is why i said i felt stupid when I realized what Casper V Prox was about. And I briefly want to walk you through a story to explain the situation a little bit better. That is, I'm a real person that's growing and learning. I, I feel like a lot of the people don't realize that, like, I'm not performing, guys. I, I am a real person that's sharing my journey with you. And if I continue to study and work hard, of course, I will evolve and update my mental model. And Every blockchain I've come across has taught me a lesson. When I first came across Bitcoin, I was like, oh, blockchain is a self-auditing ledger. That's all I saw blockchain as when I came across Bitcoin. I was like, oh, it's a self-auditing ledger, you know, because it solved the double spending problem. Then I came across Ethereum, and that's actually the first blockchain I had purchased for very cheap, like a dollar. And at that point, I saw blockchain as decentralized finance. So it went from self-auditing ledger from Bitcoin to decentralized finance to Ethereum. So as you can tell, my thoughts are evolving each blockchain I came across. Then I went to Cardano and 
Cardano made me see blockchain as permanent memory. I was like, oh man, this is a permanent memory layer, a sort of Akashic record. For those of you who are spiritually inclined, you know what the Akashic records are. So I saw the blockchain as a human Akashic record, thanks to Cardano. You know, that's when I saw the whole permanent memory layer aspect of blockchain. But then I went to Internet Computer, and Internet Computer introduced me to the idea of autonomous software with their SNS and, 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 and stuff like that. This idea of autonomous software was brilliant. And I was like, oh, this is amazing, right? So again, my concept of blockchain kept expanding with each chain I came across. Then, of course, Definity kind of just went crazy. Um, uh, so I jumped ship and went to Casper. And at first, I just saw Casper as a simple layer one for settlement uh, to deploy your token. But then VProg, someone let me know that VProgs were coming out. I went and read VProg yellow paper multiple times. And that's when I realized that, holy shit, the, the whole approach in that computer staking is flawed because what VProgs is, are doing, they like the, the VProgs are verifiable programs. They're smart contracts on Casper. They don't store state. Very different than in that computer's canisters which has massive storage, right? Complete opposite of what internet computer is doing. So I kept asking myself, like, the VProgs do not store state. Why are they doing it that way? But when you keep rereading the yellow paper, you're realizing the VProg execute the computation locally on their node and they create their own proof, right? And they submit like a commitment. They, 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 they basically do two things. They submit a commitment that shows the result of that computation. That's what needs to be stored on chain. The result, like the, the, the changes of that state that resulted from that computation. And they do that through something called commitment where they show like, okay, the state changed from point A to point B. And they also showed a proof. They also provide a proof. Their own, they, the VPROX create their own proof. They don't need an outside ZK rollup solution. So there's no zero knowledge rollup solution that Casper's using. VPROGs, they're doing it themselves. So they show their own proof that provides uh, legitimacy to how the transaction was done, that basically the transaction was done correctly, right? You need proof that the transaction was done the way it was supposed to be done, and the VPROGs provide that proof, and the commitment shows the state changes. The state went from point A to point B, and when you have that history of all the state changes based on a result of the computation that can be proven, right? They're called anchors. You have a network that is stateful, even though the smart contracts themselves do not store state. So it was clear to me that this was the correct approach, much more scalable, much more sophisticated. It was so obvious to me that this is the correct approach. Casper basically out-engineered internet computer. It was so obvious to me and that you know I ended up sharing it to the internet computer community. Clearly, they didn't take it well. They, they've spent the whole day yesterday bashing me. But because of Casper VProx, the whole on-chain model, to me, is it's wasteful. And, you know, there are other reasons why I know the whole fully on-chain thing won't pop, but I'll do an episode on that later. But to answer your question, no. What got me to invest in Internet Computer is no longer valid thanks to Casper VProx, which basically shattered my whole world again, my whole paradigm again. But... Hey, I'm human. I'm still learning. I'm just sharing my journey with you. I'm not performing in front of you. I'm just sharing you my journey as I go along it. So I hope the question uh, was answered. That is the second part. Do I the, the two parts first? Do I consider ICP a loss? Yes, I do. Uh, this is subject to change, right? Because the community can change and Definity can change. This this is subject to change. But for now, as I see it, I see ICP is a loss. Two. The thing that made me invest is an, an ICP. Do they still exist? No, because Casper VProg showed me a much superior way of creating a smart contract layer that, again, I'm sorry to say it, it makes ICP's technology look primitive. I'm sorry to say it, but reading Casper VProgs make ICP's tech look primitive to me. You know? So, so no. <laughs> <laughs> what what attracted me to internet computer is no longer there thanks to Casper VProx. And the super ironic thing is, who introduced me to Casper? Someone from ICP, right? A viewer from the ICP community, Stefan Wolf, shout out to you. 
he introduced me to he he emailed me multiple times. <laughs> I was busy coding Cityscape. He kept insisting. So that's poetic justice for you guys. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. You know what to do. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.